let's be honest for a minute. Do you even remember when you started taking D3 magnesium or K2? I bet you don't. Everyone tells you to take them. They're great for your health. But here's what nobody mentions. When exactly should you stop? Five months, a year, two years, or just keep taking them forever? Today, we're going to talk about what the supplement industry probably doesn't want you to know. These little pills go from being your friend to becoming a burden on your body. Today's video is about three supplements that almost everyone over 50 is taking, K2, magnesium, and D3. You know what? Most of us assume natural vitamins are safe. Take as much as you want for as long as you want, no problem. But recent medical research tells a completely different story. Turns out even the most natural substances can cause harm if we don't know how to use them properly. And I'm going to tell you exactly when to pause and when to continue. First, to understand the issue, we need to know what supplement cycling is. In practical terms, it's taking supplements in cycles, similar to how you work, then rest, then work again. Take them for a period, pause to let your body recover, then start again. Why make things complicated? There are three main reasons. First, your body is remarkably adaptive. When you give it the same thing every day, adjusts and stops responding as effectively as before. Think about coffee. Initially, one cup keeps you alert all day, but eventually three cups and you're still drowsy. Second, certain supplements interfere with your hormones like testosterone or melatonin. Take them continuously and your body forgets how to produce them naturally. Third, it helps avoid uncomfortable side effects. Some people experience diarrhea from magnesium. Others get constipated from D3. Taking a break allows your body to reset, which is actually beneficial. If you've been taking one of these three supplements for more than three months, type number one in the comments to let me know. Now, let's start with a vitamin that few people know about but is incredibly important for your cardiovascular health. Call it two. Call it two is like the traffic officer in your body. Its job is to make sure calcium goes where it belongs into your bones and teeth, not wandering into your arteries or kidneys. This is why people say K2 and D3 are a power couple. Missing either one spells trouble. What's interesting is that although K2 is fat soluble like D3, there's virtually no research showing it causes toxicity, even with long-term use. The problem is most of us are severely deficient in K2. That's because K2 is extremely rare in modern foods. Unlike K1, which is abundant in leafy greens, K2 only exists in a few special fermented foods. In Japan, researchers discovered something fascinating. People who regularly eat natto, that's fermented soybeans rich in K2, have significantly less arterial calcification and much stronger bones compared to Westerners of the same age. This shows just how crucial K2 really is. So do you need to cycle K2? Good news, you don't. With doses from 90 to 200 micrograms daily, you can safely take it long term. However, if you're taking high dose D3 alongside it, consider pausing both simultaneously to let your body rebalance. Important note for anyone taking blood thinners like Warin or Cotton, K2 can reduce their effectiveness, so you'll need to monitor your INR levels carefully with your doctor. K2 is safe, but there's one mineral that half of us are deficient in, and surprisingly, you shouldn't stop taking it. Magnesium. Magnesium participates in over 300 reactions in your body from creating energy, muscle contractions, nerve transmission to helping you sleep soundly and stabilizing blood sugar. Without magnesium, your body is like a car running without oil. It still runs, but sooner or later, it's going to break down. What's concerning is that up to 50% of people over 50 are magnesium deficient. Why so many? Our soil is now nutrient 
depleted. Foods are all processed. Eating too many carbs makes your body dump magnesium even faster. Result, you can't sleep. Leg cramps wake you at night, your heart pounds, you're anxious for no apparent reason. For people with healthy kidneys, magnesium is extremely safe for daily use. Research in the journal Magnesium Research from 2013 confirms that forms like glycinate, citrate, and malate all absorb well and are gentle on the stomach. Glycinate in particular causes the least diarrhea, unlike qi. Oxide, a study in nutrients from 2020 further confirms that for people with normal kidney function, daily magnesium poses no toxicity risk. However, if you have kidney issues, especially advanced kidney failure, you need to be careful because your kidneys can't eliminate excess magnesium. So why shouldn't you cycle magnesium? The reason is straightforward. First, unlike fat-soluble vitamins like D3, magnesium is water-soluble. Any excess gets flushed out through your urine daily. Second, since most of us are severely deficient in magnesium from our daily diet, stopping supplementation only makes things worse. Many people have learned this lesson the hard way. Just three days after stopping magnesium, they find themselves tossing and turning, unable to sleep like before. After a week, cramps and crushing fatigue start creeping back. And when they've stopped for two weeks, anxiety episodes and racing heartbeats make them realize their body truly needs magnesium to function normally. Instead of cycling, adjust your dosage to personal needs. If you eat plenty of dark leafy greens, avocados, nuts, and limit carbohydrates, 200 milligrams daily might suffice. But for most people, 300 to 400 milligrams daily is necessary, especially when stressed, exercising heavily, or having sleep issues. Magnesium and K2 are relatively straightforward, but vitamin D3 is a completely different story. If you're still watching at this point, comment number two to let me know this information is helpful. Honestly, every comment from you is huge motivation for me to keep sharing. And now let's explore the truth about T3, the vitamin that many people are unknowingly overdosing on without realizing it. Vitamin D3 isn't your ordinary vitamin. It functions like a hormone in your body, influencing thousands of genes and biological processes from regulating your immune system, maintaining strong bones, supporting cardiovascular function, to balancing mood. Research even shows D3 can help reduce the risk of certain cancers. But here's what most people don't know. D3 is fat soluble, meaning it gets stored in your fat tissue and liver, unlike vitamin C, which gets flushed out through urine daily. D3 can remain in your body for weeks, even months. You don't need to take it every day, especially if your vitamin D blood levels are already optimal or you regularly get sun exposure. An important study from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition discovered something remarkable. Vitamin D levels can stay elevated for many weeks after stopping supplementation, particularly in people who've been taking it continuously for extended periods. Another study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism confirmed that D3 persists in the body for a very long time, taking weeks or even months for your body to eliminate half of the stored vitamin D. Exactly why cycling D3 can be a smart strategy, especially if you're taking high doses like 5,000 IU or more daily, or if you're fortunate enough to live somewhere sunny and regularly expose your skin to sunlight for 15 to 30 minutes at midday. So when should you cycle and how? If blood tests show your 25 hydroxy vitamin D level consistently above 50 nanox per milliliter, it's time to adjust. You can pause, Supplementation for two to four weeks, especially when your levels are much higher than optimal, or switch to a lower maintenance dose around 1,000 to 2,000 IU instead of 5,000 IU 
Another approach is taking it every other day. Research by Dr. Reinhold Vieth in 2001 proved this method still maintains healthy vitamin D levels without daily dosing. What's important to remember is that everyone's vitamin D needs vary dramatically. People with darker skin need more than those with fair skin. People living at high latitudes with less sunlight need more than those in tropical regions. Winter demands higher doses than summer, and older adults absorb less efficiently than younger people. So, how do you know your body is crying out? There are five warning signs that most people ignore. You might be thinking right now, I feel fine. Why not just keep taking it? I completely understand that thinking because when everything seems okay, why change, right? But this is exactly what's dangerous about supplement overload. It doesn't hit you like a tidal wave, but creeps in slowly through subtle signs similar to fatigue from aging or life stress, making you miss that it's actually from those pills you take every day. The first sign that's often overlooked is a strange fatigue. You take vitamins for energy, yet somehow the more you take, the more sluggish you feel. It's easy to think, well, I've been working hard or it's just age catching up, but no, your liver might be crying for help from processing too many supplements every day. Then your stomach starts rebelling, but you assume it's something you ate, uncomfortable bloating, nausea, sometimes diarrhea, sometimes constipation. Did you know magnesium oxide is notorious for causing diarrhea while too much D3 actually makes you constipated? Your body is trying to tell you something, but you're not listening. The next contradiction is about sleep. Bought magnesium to sleep better, yet here you are tossing and turning until three o'clock in the morning. Maybe you took it at the wrong time. Magnesium citrate in the morning actually keeps you alert as a bird. Or worse, your D3 has gotten so high, it's disrupting your natural circadian rhythm. When your heart starts beating erratically, sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes feeling like it wants to jump out of your chest, that's when your body is screaming. Don't assume it's just stress. Maybe magnesium and potassium are out of balance. Or D3 has pushed your blood calcium too high, or it's conflicting with heart medication you're taking. And the final sign, subtle but most important, is that hard to describe feeling that something's off. You're more anxious despite taking magnesium. Joints ache despite having D3. Exhausted despite a cabinet full of vitamins. Your body has its own wisdom. And when it sounds the alarm, listen. Try stopping everything for a week or two and see what happens. You might be surprised by the difference. So there we have our answer. K2 is safe for long-term use. Magnesium shouldn't be stopped, and D3 needs careful monitoring and adjustment. But the most important thing is still listening to your own body. Now, I want to hear from you. Which supplement have you been taking the longest? Have you experienced any of the signs I just mentioned? Please leave a comment below. Remember that supplements are like spices in cooking. Just enough is wonderful. Too much ruins the dish. Everyone needs their own recipe. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell so you don't miss important health videos we share daily and especially in the description below. We've prepared a list of extremely important videos about how to use vitamin D3, K2, and magnesium safely and most effectively. Watch them now for a complete picture of proper supplementation. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.